Before we begin, be sure to watch the first 100 days first. Also subscribe to know when 100 days in master mode comes out. With that being said, enjoy the video. First thing I did was something suggested in the comments to make the shroomite digging claws to dig faster than I already did. I head to the granite biome to get a night vision helmet. I think you can use a mining helmet, but it is a good thing that I head to the granite biome because while I was working on a granite arena, I found water walking boots. Now I just needed the obsidian rose, so there was a change of plans, and now I head to hell. And so I farmed already for 100 years. Thank you for watching, goodbye. I farmed all the way until day 104. After AFK farming for a bit, I got the obsidian rose and finally made the Terra Spark boots. It's the end of a chapter. We've come a long way. Not only could I not make it in the first 100 days video, I couldn't even make it in the second 100 days video. But finally, after 200 days, we made it. I also made the fire gauntlet to have double fire. I honestly expected collecting the rose and water walking boots would take way longer, but I guess this works out too. I guess I don't have to fish anymore, but I did really want to expand my crate collection. So I guess my only other excuse for fishing would be... I also made flask of Icor. Icor? I, I still don't know how that word's pronounced. Since when I'm in battle, I usually forget to use the book most of the time, or don't really have the chance, so this would be better. And since farming went way quicker than I thought it would, I decided to get all the farming out of the way now. On day 105, I head to the dungeon to try and get the Nazer, the last item I needed to complete my Ankh shield. At some point, I got to mining the temple, planning to completely steal it one day. Probably not though, but it would be a really fun idea. While farming on day 106, I got the Wisp in a bottle, my favorite light source because of how cute it is and how much it moves around. And after getting pretty much everything I could farm from the temple but not the Nazor, I head to the underground cave to do some farming there instead. I even got the Keyblade and now it makes a fancy effect when you hit enemies. At the underground arena, I clear some more area and then I head back to the dungeon. I also saw this one cultist that had traveled quite a bit just to shoot me with a bow. I didn't kill him though because, you know, that's dedication. On day 107, I was still farming and clearing the dungeon. I had actually cleared quite a lot of the dungeon as well, so maybe I can steal it after all. While farming, I got a Shadow Jousting Lance. I'm not too sure how to use that, but I don't really need it right now. At some point, I got the Morning Star, which does even more damage than my Tarot Blade, but it doesn't have the beam nor the speed. But I'm pretty sure, from what little I do know about whips, it might be handy to keep it in my inventory for a while. For the rest of day 108, I head to the castle to do some cleaning. First thing I did was get rid of all the dirt and gravestone lying around, and then I repaired some of the walls and pieces I had destroyed. On day 109, I got to replacing the wall and removed the towers that were in the middle. It felt like they were getting a bit in the way. I also got to planning out what I could do. I genuinely can't seem to figure out what to do for the castle. The thing is, I had built one before, like the treehouse. It was sort of a tribute to an old world. But for some reason, I just couldn't figure out how I did the one before. Since the world was way older, a few years maybe, maybe around 4? and all the screenshot and data was deleted. It was very unfortunate. I spent most of day 109 trying to come up with something, but I just couldn't. And so I got to repairing the floor. Once that was done, I got to building more... pillars. I'm not too sure what to call them. On day 110, I got to placing lava under the castle and placing the walls from the new pillars. Day 11111. I got to purifying the desert and some of the crimson around it. And also the underground, it had both crimson and hollow. I'm probably not going to be able to clean all of it, but it was getting a bit out of hand. Also, I needed antlion mandibles. And to collect those, I needed a clean pure desert. And after cleaning all day, I only got like 6. And then I just kind of got to mining the dungeon again. For some reason, I just... I just wanted to go and mine it. It was just fun. I, I, maybe I will completely destroy it. I mined all the way until 112. 
After spending most of the day mining, it was time to kill some bosses. And for that, I head to the jungle to spread mushroom. It was time to hunt for truffles. No. After catching three truffles, it was time to fight the duke. From the deepest depths of the mysterious ocean water, I fished a tuna and then duke fish run. What can I say about the duke except he's fairly hard to deal with. This shark pig fish looking thing has a lot of really good late end game drops but he's not really a boss I go for too often since a part of me always considered him to be a bit too hard. Turns out he wasn't as bad as I thought he would be. But he can be a bit challenging to deal with when his health is low. Especially if you're not paying attention to your own health. He also gets really angry if you leave the ocean, so maybe don't run away from this fight. I easily defeated him three times and got the fish run wings. As far as I know, they're the best wings you can get until the pillars show up. After organizing my mess, I traded my strange plants and set fire to my unicorn. And then I set fire to my fire. I also fixed my arena. I don't remember why I took the statues or the honey. Next thing I did was grab some bait, chum, and sonar potions. It was time to do some fishing. To make endurance and life force potions for battles. Prismite and armored cave fish. And I also wanted to expand my crate collection, if I'm being honest. Luckily, both fish can be caught in the underground hollow biome. After fishing for a day and a half, I got the fish I needed, and also quite a few other fish, as well as some crates for the collection. The crate collection grows, slowly but steadily. I spent the rest of the day getting plants for potions, collecting wood, making actual food using a pot to get major improvements and better health region. Surprisingly, the biggest issue was getting water leaves and wood. Probably because I haven't made a wood farm and I haven't really looked for enough water leaves. On day 116, I brought life by cleaning some corruption and planting trees. To make sure the ugly purple corruption stays gone, I mined around, and with the exquisitely stuffed bonus, I was way too fast. While cleaning the whole world, I ended up in the jungle. I assume I didn't clean all the corruption, but it should be better than before. For the next item I needed, I head to the snow biome and began work on an underground ice cave arena. I expanded the underground ice cavern arena area snow and placed some water candles. At some point, I was just mindlessly mining around. I was having a bit too much fun. I also replaced the torches with snow biome ones. Maybe the luck that provides will help. It probably won't though. On day 118, while still farming, I realized I built this massive farm right under the snow house. Which is a terrifying thing to have right under your home. On day 19, while farming, my terraria crashed, so we ended up losing a bit of progress. Also, we're back in day 118. Since I didn't want to have to farm again, I decided to put my minions to good use, all 5 of them. So I bought tiki armor and returned to the farm. I never actually use minions as a main damage for more than a few minutes, so it'll be an interesting change. And finally, after a bit more farming, we got the frozen shell. On day 120, I made the frozen shield. There's only one more thing we need to farm for now, that honestly, I thought I had already done. After farming for all of day 121, we made the egg shield. Apparently, I still needed the bandage. I was pretty sure I had gotten it before, but I'll worry about that later. I'm sure I'll find it eventually. It was now time to fight. On day 122, I made mechanical boss summons. And while I was waiting for night time, I head to the dungeon to make sure I didn't leave any biome chests behind. I got a piranha launcher from one of the chests. The other two were from biomes I didn't have keys for. While I was here, I mined some of the dungeon. Someday I'll mine all of it. And it will be gone. That will be my greatest achievement. At night, it was finally time to fight the mechanical bosses again.
I didn't just defeat them once, but twice. And they ended up getting all the trophies for them. I returned to truffle hunting. There was an item I needed from the duke, an upgrade to my minions. After killing the duke twice, I got a bit too confident and didn't notice my health was low, so he ended up killing me. After the fourth battle, he still didn't drop what I needed, and because I had done enough farming, I decided I didn't really need the minion anyways. On day 124, I got to placing teleporters, since pylons don't really work during invasions. So if I ever really need them, they're gonna be available. Plus, I still hadn't gotten my one pylon in the ocean. I assume because there's some characters that don't like each other there, but I'll worry about that some other time. While working on setting the teleporters, the dryad accidentally teleported with me. Then she just jumped off the castle. Clumsily, she just fell into a lava. Well, at the main base, I saw a prismatic legswing butterfly. That's a really long name. It was kind of convenient it was here since I wanted to fight the empress. I successfully defeated her and got quite a lot of stuff. Her wings, the guitar, and night glow, as well as the soaring insignia, which allowed me to fly forever. Didn't really know what to do with the die. It looked really cool, but it didn't really fit on me, so I just gave it to Jasmine. The next things I wanted to try and get was the mining gear, for a 30% mining speed bonus. It was time for my amazing strategy of using Tiki armor and standing still. I should title this video Farming for 200 Days, because so far that's all I've done. After a few days and defeating 1450k bats, I had decided the dungeon gets to live for a bit longer, but its days are numbered. It's finally time to get to building. There's a lot we need to do. We need an actual tree farm, a place to plant more. I want to expand the jungle houses if I can, but I'm gonna need something for placing water. The infinite water bucket is an item you can obtain by doing quests for the angler, but I don't really want to do that. I also wanted crates, but I guess I'll figure something out. I took advantage of the rain, because I'm always distracted when it rains, to collect water leaves for crate potions, because it was time to fish. That is, after I collect amber, which I never have. 968 fossils should be enough to get me some amber. While extractinating, my minions accidentally killed the prismatic lace wing, so I had to fight the Empress of Light. And even though she caught me by surprise, I managed to defeat her. She dropped the Kaleidos go. She dropped the web to replace my old one. Except it needed to be reforged since it was weaker without the bonuses. While extractinating, I only got 25 amber. Wow, that's not a lot. It was time to do some landscaping. I was gonna turn this whole area into normal tree farm, or maybe I could do something else with it. First thing I did was flatten land and I got to cleaning the corruption. To do that, I mined around to see how far it had spread. I, I can't just clean the top, since it would just keep spreading. After kind of figuring out the area, it was time to get cleaning. I cleaned all the way until the night of day 133. Hopefully I didn't miss too much corruption.
Next thing I did was flatten land to make it easier to traverse and to prepare for building. Luckily, I became incredible at mining and destroying, so this didn't take too long. It's a lot of land, maybe a bit of an overkill. My land flattening continued all the way till day 134. And because I couldn't bring myself to fish for the angler, I made 40 buckets to help place water. I didn't really feel like doing the infinite water trick since it takes a bit of time. While trying to build, there was a slime rain, which at most is inconvenient and annoying since you know who shows up. Once I dealt with that, there was a Martian saucer and there's no way I'm letting that happen. I'm just trying to build. Building in the jungle is not easy with so many enemies showing up. It was time to get back to my roots. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was going to build a greenhouse for plants and I also began working on a bit of a forest. On day 163, I was working on making trees for a forest. I've never actually done anything like this before and I wanted to make something big. I began with trees just to test out how they will look. I was also looking a lot at the minimap to make sure the trees didn't look too weird. After making two average sized trees, I made one massive tree. The hardest part was making the leaves look good, but I also struggled a bit on the trunk. I also needed to buy fountains, flowers, and made some lights to place around. I had to make the area look magical. On day 137, there was a solar eclipse, just to not let me build in peace. Well, since I didn't want to deal with it, I head to the underground hollow to collect crystals. After that was over, I got back to building. On day 138, I got to placing pots and crystal shards to make that shiny effect. I continued building trees and spread a controlled hollow area just to bring out the magical effect that biome has. On day 139, I got to decorating. I began placing stars in bottles, leaves and wood, and placing crystals on them. While building, I was attacked by king slime out of nowhere. I don't even think it was raining slime. Maybe it's one of those really weird random encounters you can have with them. I also decided I wanted to build a home in this area, but it might have to be empty, or I can bring someone from the ocean house. I did want to place a dryad here because she fits the whole nature aesthetic, but I didn't want to mess with any pylons. I built something small, not too decorated. I just wanted to try out the dynasty wood since I've never actually built with it before. But I do really like the colors and was very happy with the small house I built. On day 140, I gave the house to the stylist because I trusted her. Well, it's only because she has pink hair. Also, there was a solar eclipse. Again, I'm just trying to build in peace. After dealing with the solar eclipse and a sandstorm, I ran back to a much prettier forest since the hollow had spread. I built another house and decided I had done enough here for now. If I have any more ideas, I'll remember to come back and build. On day 141, I noticed corruption was spreading on my minimap, so I had to go check that out. At the end of the day, after organizing, I brought some chests to the enchanted forest and removed some stone to make sure grass grows all over the parts of the flat area. Flatlands. Let's call it the flatlands. And then I got to removing background. I didn't really want to do this, but I have to. It just takes way too long. It took quite a while, all the way until day 142. Quite a few in-game hours as well. And since I was already doing a lot of mouse pressing, I got to placing lava on the castle. I spent all day looking for my lava shark and then I found like 4 of them. I reopened the areas I had blocked off and got to placing lava. That idea of using a lava tunnel to move around might actually be possible now. And after placing lava for day 143 and 144, we had a decently large lava tunnel. But I wanted a bit more. I got to expanding the tunnel. While working on the tunnel, I saw a lot of corruption had spread again. I probably missed a bit and now I'll have to clean it again. Well, that should do it. After that mess, I got back to working on my own lava mess. 
I could make a tunnel that goes all the way back to my main base, but that would take way too long. And honestly, I don't think I would use it. I did make a pretty long tunnel though. On day 148, after 3 days dealing with 2 blood moons and 1 goblin invasion, I had finally finished plating lava. I don't know why I set these dumb goals for myself, but I'm never going to stop doing it. In fact, there's another dumb goal I want to get working on. Ah, <sighs> the dungeon. The temple of the overworld, where the skeleton fight takes place. Where you can get incredible accessories later on. The one place where you can collect ectoplasm. I want it gone. On day 105, I made a joke about sealing the dungeon, and thought it was a ridiculous goal. And I loved it. It's so dumb, of course I'm going to mine it, and all of it. So I mined, each passing day, spent mining. Day 149, 150, 151, and 152. While mining the dungeon, I learned that cursed skulls are the worst enemy in the game, and that enemy spawns can sometimes get very out of hand. I was getting blood moons, pirate invasions, so many interruptions. But by day 153, I had mined most of the dungeon and only had a small chunk left. And finally, at 3 p.m. on day 154, I mined the entire dungeon. I still had a few blocks to mine here and there, and I'm not going to mine the whole background because that would take way too long. But I did it. And now you may be wondering, what did I do with all the dungeon bricks? And that's a very good question, see, something I didn't show is that I built a small dungeon. It's not done of course, but I kept all the blocks in these chests. It's almost two chests full. Maybe I missed a few blocks here and there, but it's almost every single dungeon block. On day 155, I got to building a small replica of the dungeon. But of course they had to be a sword eclipse, because building in peace is too much to ask. Would it be messed up to place the old man back in this? I mean, I don't really know his lore that well, but he was cursed, and I think he couldn't leave the dungeon. Right? When the solar eclipse ended, the blood moon started, and at this point it just seems intentional. From the dungeon, I brought paintings, an alchemy station, and some books to make it feel like the original. I think it did a pretty good job. Remember what I said about the solar eclipse and then a blood moon? Well, now there's a pirate invasion. Again. Why is this happening? On day 156, I finished the mini dungeon, and I made the old man live in it. It's terrible, I know. I also got to clean the corruption. The one in the jungle had came back. And on day 157, I realized the corruption in the desert and crimson had returned. This time I just let it be. I returned to finish off my enchanted forest, since it felt like a part of it was incomplete, and I wanted to get it done. I worked on adding some trees on the right side for the rest of the day. Then I got to making trees for the left side. I was going to use hollow wood, but hollow wood doesn't really work for the trunks. I think it looks pretty good for now. It was my first time building something like this, and I gotta say I'm quite proud. I also finally got rid of the lava in the minimap, it was really annoying seeing it there. It was time for castle work. I can't finish 200 days without working on this. At least one last try. I changed the top of the castle to be red, and tried a few designs for the middle part. I think I can safely say I'm more skilled at building in the natural aesthetic. Like I mentioned, I built a castle before, but this one was way more complicated. And now I was struggling. I decided I had to go with something more simple, and it was sort of coming along. On day 160, I realized I had to move the towers one block over. Well, that shouldn't be too bad, I hope. Well, it really wasn't. 
I think I did something that was very smart by using block swap. I knew where to push everything. It turned out the whole top of the castle was off center. The top right side was 14 blocks in length while the other side was 12. I think I have to move everything one block to the left and I should be fine. On day 161 I was very confused and after some measuring I think I got everything right. I hope. I did mess up one of the towers and had to rework it. Turns out something was wrong. The left tower was now 11 and the right was 12. Then I realized the whole castle was uneven. It's 59 blocks wide exactly. The best thing I can do is make a different design or maybe I made a mistake in moving blocks. Regardless, I had to find a way to fix it. And by 1am I had done it. The castle looked more even and centered since I know I would annoy everyone had I not done that. Honestly, I think the castle was the thing everyone was most excited for, so I'm very happy to be able to work on it. On day 162, I got to work on the most important part of the castle. Kinda. It's gonna be in the center, so it has to look fancy. So I decided to make a good old fashioned spiral staircase. Working on those stairs took way longer than I expected. And now, I will work on the castle in time lapse form. What's up everyone, welcome to my castle. Here we are in the lava pit, the most bottom part of the castle. Up here we have the original area, the part I was staying at before I built the sky base. This is my favorite part, it reminds me of the treehouse, it's sort of like a blacksmith area. I don't know why it would be inside of the castle but don't question it. Up here we have the library storage area and some abandoned crates. On this side we have a bar food area. And here is my guide face painting collection, I only have two. Here we have the treasure room, only the most valuable of valuable items. And finally the throne of the castle, all alone at the top. I don't think they belong up here. And here we have the weapon that helped me at the start of hard mode. And finally on day 168 we finished the castle. Only took 160 days for me to finish and it's still pretty basic. And I could have done better on the decoration but I was starting to run out of time. It was time to put on the mask again because we still have work to do. The most intense of work, not many can handle this. Fishing. Crates, fish, potions, you know the deal. Actually while fishing I realized there was one more thing I wanted to do in the castle. So I went to do that real quick. I didn't originally do this since I thought it would be too much lava but honestly it's not that bad, it's different, I kinda like it. After fishing for just another day, since I ran out of bait, I got 20 prismite and 31 armored keyfish, 32 pearlwood crate, and 14 mithril, among other stuff, but that's the ones that matter the most. I also made quite a lot of potions, and got to placing the crates in my collection. The beach homes are no more. It's finally time. After kinda easily defeating the Lunatic Cultists, who I completely forgot existed, we were greeted by the Celestial Pillars. The first pillar I dealt with was the Stardust Pillar that was conveniently in my arena. I guess I don't live in the middle of the world this time like I usually do. With the Stardust Fragment, I made the Dragon Summon. I also spread corruption, I was gonna need more Icor for later. The second pillar I dealt with was the Bordex Pillar. The Bordex Pillar was right next to the Jungle House. After defeating the second pillar, I head to the Flatlands. I didn't really have an arena so I turned the Flatlands into one. 
I was planning to either run around on the ground or use the soaring insignia to fly around. I'll figure it out. With the Bordix fragments, I made the Phantasm, the bow we used in the original 100 days to defeat the Moon Lord. The third pillar I dealt with was the Nebula Pillar. It was near the Snow House. With the Nebula fragments, I made nothing. I got like 72, I didn't know you could get that many. The final pillar was the Bordix Pillar. It was the only pillar I didn't get the single banner in. The first Moon Lord fight went somewhat well, but I died. I, I mean, I wasn't expecting much. It was time to build a proper arena, since I had forgotten about it. It's arena building time. Arena building time is over. I made a celestial sigil, so time to retry. On my second try, I panicked, so I died. Let's just, come on, let's just, we, we all know where this is heading. If I want to beat this guy, I gotta get everything I can to get stronger. It's gonna take a lot of training, so let's do it all one more time. Solar pillar, solar eruption, reforge. Rain, Q fish run, Vortex pillar, Nebular pillar, Stardust pillar, Moon Lord, victory. Huh. I got quite a lot of stuff. A globe that controls gravity, the portal gun, and the MK2. Luminite, the Moon Lord tentacle, which is just light. The Moon Lord mask, and the Celestial starboard. The Celestial starboard was a bit confusing to use, but then I got the hang of it. I defeated the Moon Lord two more times. The second time it wasn't even raining, it's just the cute fish run is a god killing cutie. Let's see what I got from two treasure bags. Two terrariums, that sucks. Oh well. But look how cool the sky hub looks with the nebula monolith. Also look at the castle with the solar one. While removing background, I found the butterfly that summoned the empress. But I didn't have a bug net, so I just killed it. And I got the starlight and the depth set. I also wanted to expand on the jungle homes, but I didn't want to have to do the infinite water trick. In all honesty, I was tired of placing liquids. Luckily, I noticed that right above the jungle home, there was a massive sky island. So it's mine now. While building, a goblin army interrupted me. I'm going to miss being attacked constantly while trying to build. I'll probably deal with it once I get into 100 days in master mode though. On day 179, there was a solar eclipse. You know what, I'm actually not gonna miss this at all. I hope it stops. I took a break from building to collect Icar to make Icar flask. Not a lot of crimson had spread, but it was enough for enemies to spawn. We basically had more than enough to use one for each day. Well, let's finish working on the jungle houses. That should be good, I think. It, it looks fine. It was time to try and get the Zenith. Zenith? Zen Zen First kill, I got the Lunar Flare. Second kill, we got the Lunar Portal Staff. Third kill, we got one of the swords we needed, the Star Wrath. The thing I'm worried about wasn't this sword, but the Meow Mir. That sword took so long to get in the original 100 days, so hopefully that won't repeat itself. It's time to fight the pillars again.
day 183, 184, 185, 186, 187, 188, 189, 190, 191, 192. And finally, day 193. I got the Meowmi. It took so long. I don't even remember how long it took in the first 100 days. But it took 10 days of non-stop farming. I had obtained so much loot as well. I had like 3 chests full of loot. And some other stuff left around. I still needed the Influx Weaver and the Horseman's Blade. Also the Seedler. But that one might be the easiest to get. Some of you may have already noticed, but most of the swords on display on the base are the swords used for the Zenith. They were there so I knew where I had put them before. While pumpkins were growing, I head to the jungle to try and get the Seedler. I hadn't gotten it yet, but it was time to go, because it was time for the pumpkin moon. It was easier than I expected. After quote unquote organizing, I got like two chests and a half of loot. It was time for the next sword. While I let Plantera bulbs reappear in the jungle, I got to Martian hunting. I was actually starting to get worried I would run out of time. Hopefully that wouldn't be the case. Well, I had good news and bad news. I found a Martian probe after a bit. Bad news was, I defeated the Martian invasion. And defeated 3 or 4 Martian saucers. But I didn't get the Weaver. Back to alien hunting. I spent all day 196 probe hunting. I didn't find any until an hour before day 197. Hopefully I'll be able to get the Weaver this time. I was afraid of killing any Martians since I didn't want the event to end too fast, but I had to kill a few just to make the saucer spawn. Unfortunately, after not fighting back and letting saucer spawn, none of them dropped the Weaver. I was starting to run out of days and I only needed two more swords. Back to probe hunting. And this time I actually found one pretty quick. Let's try and get that sword again. And surprise, the first other we killed dropped the influx Weaver. Now we only need one more sword. Now we head to the jungle, and the first Pantera we killed dropped the Seedler. Turns out I forgot about the Star Fury, so I got to fishing. And there were so many Martian probes. And finally, on day 200, I made the Zenith. A final big goal for the final day of this world. Then I reforged it till I got legendary. I had so much money I wasn't ever going to use, so it didn't even matter. It was time to put it to use. After that was done, there was one last thing I wanted to do before saying goodbye to this world. <laughs> I'm gonna miss this world. And as me and Jasmine saw the sunrise for day 201, Having completed most of my goals, it was time to save and quit. 